Hi everyone. Now, we're going to have to solve some problems, so I want to give you a method to solve those problems. Now, all of our relative motion equations are vector equations. So they can be solved in one of two ways. For you know, one thing, we could be written as two-dimensional Cartesian vectors. And we could then say, okay, well, all the 2D scalar components can be solved up to figure out all the unknowns. So we break it into components. We solve that way. We've done it a whole bunch before. However, we can also solve these graphically by use of trigonometry. So if we know what the sides are, um, like you know, if we have this is 10 and this is 15, and we know what the angle is between them, well, we can figure out what the relative position or acceleration or velocity is by solving for this as a triangle. And we'll do that using the law of sines or the law of cosines. And answer this question right here, yes, CAD systems can most definitely be used to solve these kinds of problems. If you know AutoCAD or SOLIDWORKS, you can solve them very easily in a sketch. Okay, now law of sines and cosines might have been a long time away. So let's go ahead and go over those real quick. Now the law of sines simply says that the side of A over its opposite angle, sine of opposite angle, is equal to side B over sine of its opposite angle which is equal to side C, which is over sine of its opposite angle. If you're unsure which one goes with which, the side is the base, the angle is the point. Okay, the side is the base, angle is the point. So that can help you just think that's the point. Okay, which one's the base? That's the base then. And you should be able to figure it out. Now this works as long as you know at least either the side or the angle. Um, well, pretty much works as long as you know three things. These two and one of the other ones. You can figure it out. There's some cases where you wouldn't be able to figure it out, but for most cases, this will give you enough. Now law of cosines is a little bit different. Now if I just hide this right here, you might realize that this looks an awful lot like the Pythagorean theorem. And you're correct. It's very similar to Pythagorean theorem. It's just we have a correction term right here to take into account that we've messed up a little bit on our Pythagorean theorem. It's not just a squared equals b squared plus c squared. No, we got this correction term right here. If you look at it, whatever you have out front, the a squared, is the angle you care about over here. And then you have the side lengths. So this works if you don't have, you know, like this would work if I had, let's see, this angle right here and this and this, and that's it. I can't use law of sines because none of those have enough information for me to be actually useful. But I can use law of cosines to solve for A. I could then use law of sines to solve for B and C. Law of sines is far easier to write down, so just always go back to that if you can. As another note, this works for any type of triangle not just right triangles. Like your Pythagorean theorem, that only works for right triangles, but these work for any kind of triangle. As long as it is technically a real triangle and you just haven't just made up some random numbers and hoped it would work, this will be good for you. So we'll stop here, and then next time we're gonna jump into an example. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.